Hi folks, look, I know this video is very, very late, and for that I sincerely apologise. The last two weeks have not been kind to my free time at all, in a multitude of ways. Some of them were in my control, some were not. I'm not going to bore you with the reasons or excuses, though it does bear saying that I started working on this video in new software, because for some reason I thought that that would be a good idea. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. And basically I had to start over. Anyway, please accept my sincere apologies. I have some ideas for how to make sure this doesn't happen again, and I'll make a follow-up video about those after I've posted round 7. Alright, that's enough groveling. Let's get into the video you actually came here for. Hey Sprocketeers, welcome to the third party engineering and acquisition of British Armour Group Teabag, round six, the result. This time I asked you to make a prototype for a so-called Infantry Combat Support Vehicle, or ICSV, which totally wasn't an anachronistic early war IFV or anything of that sort. The engines on offer were all pretty anemic, and caused some of our contestants some trouble, but the whole purpose behind this round was to foster anew the art of weight reduction, a challenge many of you rose to. 32 of you to be exact, making this a bumper round for sure. As ever, I owe a huge debt of gratitude to my assistant judges for their tireless work behind the scenes. I couldn't do this without my amazing team, who give so much of their time for free just so we can have this contest. I also want to thank all of our lovely contestants, without whom there would be no contest at all. But enough with the preamble, it's time for the reason that you're all here, the results. First, but not particularly foremost, it's the sales pitch category, where the objective is to sell your design to the War Office. Think Dragon's Den or... Hang on, what's the American version of that? Shark Tank. Shark Tank! They're investors who sit on lots of money like, you know, dragons on treasure, not bloody loan sharks. There's a subtlety too far for the Yanks, evidently. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Oh, speaking of, did you know that I got sidetracked as a guest in the upcoming Sidetrack podcast? Well, I did. And now you know. So go check out the Getting Sidetracked podcast. So you too can lose track of your train of thought as it becomes derailed from its tracks. And, uh, <clears throat> anyway. Here are your top five pitches. Or rather, here would be your top five pitches... If it were possible to separate second to sixth place. I suppose a lot of you think this is funny at this point. This, oh let's all be tied for the top places with the exact same score and force T to make a judgement call lark. Well I can assure you that it isn't funny or clever. So cut it out, alright? Here then are the joint second place pitches. All bloody five of them. In no particular order... The BHI Infernal by Terrianis, the Mark 16 Dragoon by Comic 79, the S6 Chadley by JRFS Assorted, the Infantry Support Character by Ben Vakin, and the M312A8 by F Cave Troll. Mercifully, there was a clear winner in this category, just. The sales pitch category win goes to the A23 Mark III Pegasus by the Man Gallify. Wow. This is a lot of writing. Serious points for effort here. What makes this the winning pitch? Well, to quote the assessment of my assistant judge, this pitch is almost perfect, and only lost out on one category point for not quite being able to match the runner-up designs for the depth of detail regarding the unseen and internal features of the vehicle, though this aspect of the pitch is also very good. While there's plenty of narrative here, in the style of Luminous Lily, which ensures that we are very much in character, this remains at heart a pure and simple sales presentation, and consequently scores top marks for salesmanship, as it's clear that these characters are doing their best to sell this design to the War Office, and for their part they do a good job. The pictures don't benefit from the wonders of Photoshop, but they're all well framed, plentiful and suitably grayscale. But moreover, they contain a sense of humour, where appropriate, which is appreciated. Moreover, we all know I'm a sucker for a stat sheet, and in this case, we have this wonderful in-universe one, which is here pictured as a plaque in front of the tank at the presentation, which is a really nice touch. 
Well done the man Gallify. This was a really close contest category and it's hard not to give the win to any of the top six, but you did just enough to pull ahead and claim the win. So congratulations. Next up, it's the aesthetics category. The category that once upon a time didn't exist, but now it does and it's becoming increasingly competitive, I might add. Here are this month's Armoured Beauty Pageant front runners. In at five, it's the Vickers NHI <coughs> Medium by Cute Little Boy. In fourth, the Mark III Wallaby by Mediocre Anteater 942. In third place, the KAT or Cat 22 by Katza 316. Silver medal position goes to the R1 support tank by Dralo. And the aesthetics category winner is the A18 Dragoon 2 by Comrade Gopnik. Comrade Gopnik, you've excelled yourself this time. I love the look of this machine. Sure, we've had designs with more aesthetic wow factor and innovative flair than this before. It's true, but what the A18 Dragoon does so well is, well, it's just getting everything right. From the track type to the side skirts, the turret design, the custom decals, the muzzle brake, the rivets, this machine screams British. Detail is everywhere, and this right here is my favourite part of the whole vehicle. The water-cooled Vickers machine guns are a lovely touch and I was pleasantly surprised to see the return of Decca Dave's signature partially open custom storage box idea, complete with stuff inside. But perhaps the most outstanding feature of this vehicle are the custom decals. Every hatch and box is labelled in a convincing and immersive style and we have all the appropriate division and squadron markings, bridge rating disc, license plate, crew inscription, you name it, it's all here and it all really makes the vehicle feel real. It goes without saying that this design therefore gets 10 out of 10 for detail. National identity and era appropriateness as well. Only a single subcategory point was lost for X Factor as the design is fairly safe looking overall and because I'm mean and I don't like to give out perfect scores. Anyway, congratulations Comrade Gopnik, you definitely deserve this category win for the effort you put in here. Alright, time to move on to that most riveting of categories, specification criteria exceeded. This is one for the top trunks child in each of us. This category measures how your design compares to the minimum requirements of the challenge specification. The judging for this category functioned a little differently from usual this time, to try to better capture the overall quality of the vehicles, rather than simply rewarding you for having the most fuel and ammo. In fifth place, it's the Mark 16 Dragoon by Comic 79. At number four, we have the Fennec Mark II 840 by Porticaro. In third, it's the Mark IV Pitchfork by The Dogfather. Runner up here is the Calyx ICSV by Initiate Epsilon. And the specification criteria exceeded category winner is the Triton ICSV by YHI Zukaku. To be quite frank with you, the Triton is a bit of an enigma to me. It somehow manages the highest total score in this category while by and large avoiding scoring points seemingly wherever possible. At 11 tons, it's one of the heaviest and it only just sca scrapes past the minimum speed requirement. It uses the only engine that doesn't score you bonus points and the wrong gun you're meant to use one of the howitzers. It doesn't have extra internal space, nor does it have an exceptionally large fuel tank. It's quite average score-wise until you get to its armor, where it has easily one of the toughest armor profiles of any of the vehicles submitted, with frontal hull and turret armor of 70 mm or thicker, which certainly helps its score considerably. Couple that with perfect gun handling, excellent crew efficiencies, neutral steering and a radio operator, yes, as a hidden bonus this round and we plan to make radio a part of the specification requirements from the next round onwards, and the Triton manages to do enough to edge ahead of the competition. The result is a surprisingly well-rounded vehicle that functions more like an infantry tank with the ability to carry infantry, rather than an IFE, and that's very cool in my book. Well done YHI Zukaku, you are the specification criteria category winner. Take me down to the proving grounds where the concrete is grey and the mud is brown. In the proving ground category, we put your tanks through their paces in a series of mobility trials to prove whether or not your designs are just good on paper or not. This round, my assistant judge decided to change things up a little and include a test lap of the sandbox grounds, including target shooting. Let's see how you all got on. In fifth place, it's the A18 Dragoon 2 by Comrade Gopnik. 
In joint second, we have three entries, and here you lot go again with this nonsense. It's the Mark 16 Dragoon by Comic 79, the A23 Mark III by The Man Gallify, and the Mark III Wallaby by Mediocre Anteater 942. But the clear category winner here is the Wayland IFE by XX Intended Disaster XX. Again, we did things a little differently this round for the mobility testing. As I said, my assistant judge devised a course that utilised more of the sandbox map and tested mobility in a more real world sense, including some target shooting. The time was also recorded for your best run out of three loops of the circuit. The Wayland IFE does a very good job, even when hounded by these uh, ominous floating tools. The Wayland proved to be accurate in the target shooting and capable of consistently posting some of the very fastest lap times. It excels at crossing any obstacles we threw at it and picked up no penalties on its runs. So, well done intended disaster, you succeeded in making an impressively mobile vehicle despite my best efforts to make you all suffer with the worst possible engines I could think of. Congratulations on the mobility category win. And now with our category winners suitably celebrated, it ought to be time to announce this round's runner-up, but we can't because there isn't one. That's right, it has happened again. The stars have aligned and two vehicles have, in the most mundane and pointless miracle ever, yet still a miracle, scored exactly the same amount in total score. 36.25 to be precise. Good people of the Sprocket community, it is my honour to present your joint winners of Teabag Round 6. The Cataphract by Unicycle Corn and the A90 Aegist by Luminous Lily. Continuing the tasteless and uncalled for tradition of presenting joint winners in this rather tacky shade of celebratory gold, please feast your eyes on this pair of truly top tier tanks. Luminous Lily has won previously, so we're going to cover our newest champion first the Cataphract by Unicycle Corn. Unicycle Corn has been so close and yet so far from category wins and even being runner-up on so many times. Now it feels honestly such a relief that one of their designs is finally getting the recognition they deserve. The Cataphract is a highly convincing vehicle in every regard. Its sales pitch was given a perfect score by the category judge. I will quote them. Oh my goodness, I love this pitch. The style of framing it as a German intelligence report is a refreshing change. The detailing is excellent, the photography is great, and after reading it, I'm convinced the Germans are right to be afraid. Uh, what I think is meant by that is that you can't exactly say this pitch is trying to sell the tank, as it's written from this unique perspective of being an enemy report, but what is written here is impactful and convincing, which suffices for the salesmanship score. Aesthetics-wise, the Cataphract was the only design that could keep pace with the category winner, the A18 Dragoon. It's highly detailed and manages to nail the British design features without falling foul of anything that really doesn't fit with the early war era. Bonus points for the original artwork Unicycle Corn did for the nose art on this machine, and I promise that's because it's just cool artwork and not because it's racy artwork. In terms of specification criteria, the Cataphract is actually relatively mid-table. It is, however, very quick at 26.5 miles an hour and has good fuel and ammo reserves. It's got excellent mobility, falling just outside the front runners mentioned earlier in the video, but by less than a hair's breadth. It may have scored slightly better if it had been geared for acceleration rather than top speed. All in all though, a highly impressive entry with a total score, as I said, of 36.25 out of 40. You know who else got 36.25 out of 40? Yeah, Luminous Lily, with the A90 Aegis. As ever, Lily provides an incredibly strong sales pitch, wrapped up in her customary, ongoing narrative of everyone's favourite, totally platonic, honest pair of lady tank designers. Always fully in character and also never lacking in detail or salesmanship, it's only the photos that let this pitch down a little as they are merely good rather than outstanding. In terms of aesthetics, for me this is Lily's weakest design looks-wise in a while. It's somewhat ungainly looking with its very thin tracks and toy-like proportions. I realise these are concessions for performance. Nevertheless, there's detail in spades and it makes no mistakes as far as era appropriateness goes. As ever, concessions are also made to adhere to the Valkyrie Motorworks design language over classic British tropes, but we, we love the Valkyrie design language and it's cool that it's consistent across all of her designs. There's still a good use of 
um, custom decals here and built-in decals which cement the design in universe and in character with the contest. Like so many of Lily's designs, the Aegis sets the bar high in specification criteria exceeded, with prodigious fuel and ammo reserves even when using the weaker MAT engine, which earns you a bonus point. Particularly impressive is the fact that this design can exceed 24 miles an hour in spite of all that. Armour is merely adequate, but that does not drag it down. If the A90 had not been removed from the pool as a joint winner, it would have come second in this category. Finally, the Aegis, in typical Valkyrie style, proved unstoppable on the proving grounds, handling the course and every obstacle with ease, with a very competitive time. It suffers slightly with the shooting elements, I think because of the inherent inaccuracy of the 3.7 inch howitzer, but it still scores very highly, giving it the same 36.25 total score as the Cataphract. Congratulations on the joint win to both Unicycle Con and Luminous Lily. These are both exemplary designs and you should both be rightly proud of your hard work. This was a deliberately tough challenge and it was closely contested. And finally, it's time for this month's honourable mention. And this time the honourable mention goes to Ben Vakin, whose sales pitch for the infantry support carrier gave us these awesome illustrations. They're not exactly period appropriate, sure, but they are awesome, super fun, and Ben Vakin, you should absolutely offer to do these for folks of their tanks on commission. I love them and I would definitely pay you for some of these for some of my favourite designs. With that, this video and round 6 draw to a close. I'll see you back in 1941 for round 7, which will be posted in the next couple of days, so do look out for that. But until then, take care out there.